the Texas Rangers could use a little bit of help in their starting rotation. Even though there are a lot of free agent starting pitchers, what if the Rangers wanted to go the trade route? On today's show, I'm breaking down 10 different starting pitchers the Rangers could trade for this offseason. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on to the World Series champion Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan covering this team for 10 seasons, including all five as the founder and host of this podcast. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Hit subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Now, before we get into the trade targets and the Rangers trade assets as well, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, let's start before we get into 10 different starting pitchers the Rangers could trade for. What are the Rangers trade assets that they would actually consider trading? Now, the Rangers have a very deep farm system at this point. They have a lot of potential future stars in that farm system and a lot of really, really good young players that are under the under team control for a long, long time. And there's not a whole lot of everyday starting position player um Uh, openings available right now for the Rangers. And there's not a whole lot of position players on the major league team that the Rangers would consider trading, but there are a couple of them in the right scenario where I would consider, I think the Rangers would also consider trading them. Now the top tradable asset, these are, they're two major leaguers that played significant portions of of this season and played big roles on the Rangers winning it all this year. That is Leo Tavares and Ezekiel Duran. Both of them are under team control for, I believe Zeke is under team control for another four seasons, uh, I think at minimum, maybe five. Um, And I know that Leo Tavares is under team control for at least another three seasons, maybe four, um, depending on I can't remember exactly what the arbitration number is for both those guys there. They're both very young. Lodi is going to be 25 next year. He's coming off a two and a half four season where he played some excellent defense, had a few months where he was just hot as the Dickens and was one of the Rangers best hitters in May. And also in June, he was incredible, but really slowed down towards the end of the season, had some great moments in the playoffs, including homering off of Justin Verlander was just overall very, very good in the ALCS and even in the earlier rounds as well. Not as much of an offensive threat in the World Series, but still playing great defense, um, you know, throwing out runners, being aggressive on the base paths. That is what Leo Tavares does. It is very difficult to grow one of those homegrown players, but the Rangers have basically four really good outfielders, potentially five, if you include Ezekiel Duran in that outfield bunch. And if the Rangers want to improve their starting rotation, which at this point could use a little bit of bolstering, not a complete overhaul, but just a little bit of added depth, never hurt anybody. Um, That's a situation where I think Leody would be uh, an option. I don't think they would trade him for anybody with just any starting pitcher with one year of control, unless it was, I don't know, someone absolutely incredible. But um, yeah, he is definitely, I think, under consideration for trade, not I'm not in any hurry to ship him off just because White Langford is knocking on the door and because Evan Carter was exceptional for uh, two months this year in the big leagues, but definitely someone that you consider. Ezekiel Duran, even though he didn't have the best second half and did not play at all in the playoffs, he was a crucial part of the Rangers' success when Corey Seager went down. Ezekiel Duran stepped up in a huge way, playing an everyday shortstop role and could be an everyday second baseman or third baseman or left fielder, I think, on most major league teams. But right now the Rangers are pretty book solid in the middle infield for the next, oh, I don't know, half decade. And same with third base and uh, same with the outfield for the foreseeable future. But Ezekiel Duran has definitely shown some star potential. He is an exceptional bent bench bat of your super utility guy to plug in there if you have an injury to a Corey Seager or God forbid a Marcus Simeon or God forbid a Josh Young. He did a solid job, was not as great replacing Josh Young down the stretch, but still a very young player with a incredibly high upside. He's going to be 25 next season, just like Leody. And uh, the sky is the limit for Ezekiel Duran. Now, 
Other guys on the trading block, I believe Justin Foscu, who is probably going to be protected on the 40-man roster. Those 40-man decisions for the Rule 5 protection have to be done by today, which is so nice to come off a World Series and not have not think about the 40 the Rule 5 draft and 40-man protection like we would have been doing for about a month last year. That's just so nice to have that nice long World Series run to be distracted by that and not have to worry about these minor things. But Foscu is a guy who I don't think there's much of a spot for him on this Major League roster um, because there's just he's a good bat. I think he's going to be a good could be a good bat in the Major Leagues next year, but doesn't really have a defensive position, can be not horrible at third base, could be maybe passable at second. Maybe you stick him at left field, but he's really a DH, and the Rangers have so many good bats and so many better potential options in free agency that I just don't think think there is all that much more room for him. And the last guy on this top five, four, top four list of most tradable assets, I think Jack Leiter is under consideration here. Now, it depends on what other teams see his value is. If his value is very, very high because other teams are believing in that last month that his turnaround, like I am, that his command is fixed, then um, I think he might be in this high up list. But if his value is in the tank, then I don't think you sell low on Jack Leiter. I think you, if the Rangers are feeling very confident in him, unless they're just absolutely done with him, which I don't think they would be a guy who they drafted second overall just a couple years ago. I think they have the utmost belief in him that he could be at least a major league caliber starting pitcher, which the Rangers have not homegrown one of those in the hottest of minutes. I I think that he would be under consideration here. Guys who are untouchable at this point, um, Evan Carter, definitely untouchable. Wyatt Langford, uh, happy early birthday. His birthday is tomorrow, November 15th. He will be turning 22, which is still nuts. He is going to be knocking on the door. He was already knocking on the door of the big leagues after a few months of being in the minor leagues because he was just that good. Josh Young, completely untouchable, even though for some horrific reason, he finished fourth in AO work of the year voting. That is uh, just absolutely insane with how good he was for the entirety of the season, not just a okay second half, um, like Tristan Casas of the Red Sox. It's fine. I'm fine. He's a World Series champion. He's an all-star starter. And he is better than Tristan Casas. And uh, I can't even think of the, uh, I think it's Tanner Bybee that finished um, second in AL Rookie of the Year voting. It's fine. I'm fine. Clearly definitely over it um but sebastian walcott i think is is also on this untouchables list he is a 19 year a teenager that made it all the way to high a in his very first season of pro ball um and then guys who i think are maybe borderline untouchable unless you get a really good deal for a young pitcher with multiple years of control um probably like three years anthony gutierrez who's a guy the rangers are very very high on in his ceiling um, of his star potential didn't have the best year this year but still a very, very high ceiling on him. And Brock Porter, definitely the highest ceiling of, I think, any pitcher in this Rangers farm system right now. Um, yeah, but he is still a long ways away. So if you get the right deal, then I think either of those guys could possibly be included. Now, let's get into the 10 starting pitchers I think the Rangers could trade for. Now, these are not all guys who are on the trading block, but these are just potential options. A few of them are most definitely on the trading block as we get further on in this top 10. Those guys become more and more likely to be traded and a little bit just better overall and and will probably cost less. That's kind of where my evaluation is. I'm wanting some, if you can get somebody who's young and controllable for years to come, that's great. Um, If you can get somebody with a high upside, uh, that's great. But um, I'm going for... um, more possible, more probable, and um, more able to contribute right now than um, long-term potential upside plays, which is why I'm starting with number 10, Patrick Sandoval, the 27-year-old left-handed pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels Anaheim. He has got three years of arbitration control left. Um, The good for him, his upside is is very high. He's pretty good at preventing runs. Um, he has shown, you know, extreme upside in the WBC. He was very, very good this year for, I believe it was, yes, uh, Team Mexico that he was playing for. And in 2022, he was a 25-year-old who put up a 291 ERA in just under 150 innings and uh, over 150 strikeouts, so over a strikeout per inning. He has gotten 8.8 Ks per nine for his career. The bad for him is consistency. Just putting it all together has not quite 
been there for him just yet. 28 starts for him last year, uh, just under 145 innings, a 4.11 ERA, and 4.6 walks per nine. He's got four walks per nine in his career. Not the best command, not the best um, ability to throw strikes consistently. When he's on, he is very, very good. But when he is not, he is definitely hittable and can beat himself with the walks. Coming up, we'll look at the other nine pitchers on this list and who I think the Rangers should definitely be in play for trading for this offseason. Right after this word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. You can bet on the Dallas Mavericks to continue their winning ways. The Dallas Stars have been also incredibly good, and and the Cowboys as well. I mean, you want to bet on any DFW sports team. It seems like the Rangers' magic is is sharing itself of winning magic with every other team in the Metroplex. So get in on the action. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Shout out to the everydayers for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. On tomorrow's show, I'll be doing my best case scenario for the Rangers this offseason. Now, let's look at the number nine pitcher on this list of 10 starting pitchers the Texas Rangers could trade for this offseason. Number nine, I have Tariq Skubal, a 27-year-old left-handed pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. He's got three years of arbitration control left. The good on him is uh, run prevention. He's good at not allowing runs to score, which is the entirety of a Major League Baseball pitcher's job. He had 15 starts last year with the Tigers, his age 27 season, 280 ERA, 80 and a third innings pitched, and 102 strikeouts. That's 11.2 Ks per nine for his career, 10 Ks per nine, just two and a half walks per nine. Overall, pretty solid stuff. A 158 ERA plus. And the year before, 21 starts, 117 and two thirds innings, uh, 117 strikeouts, a 350 ERA, 387 ERA in his career in 379 innings pitched. Now, the bad with him is health. He has not been the most healthy over his four years in the big leagues. He did make 29 starts in 2021 as a 24 year old, 149 and a third innings pitched. That was the most he has pitched in his big league career in 2022. He pitched in 21 games. All of those were starts, just 117 and two-thirds innings. And this year, like I said, 15 starts, just 80 and a third innings. So keeping him on the hill has been difficult. He had a flexor tendon surgery, um, which is why he missed so much time this year. Struggled a little bit right when he came back, but was able to lock it down and return to form that he was in 2022 and even a little bit better this year. Now, number eight on this list of starting pitchers the Rangers could trade for is Shane Bieber, the former Cy Young winner for the Cleveland Guardians. He's got one year of control. He's going to be 29 next season. He's coming off his worst season in his major league career. Well, didn't have a great uh, rookie year in 2023 but has been an all-star twice, won the Cy Young in 2020, also has, let's see, uh, three? Yeah, three different top 10 Cy Young finishes, finished fourth in 2019 as a 24-year-old, and finished in seventh in 2022 as well. A 327 ERA for his career, 831 innings, 938 strikeouts, but this year, just not quite the same stuff from Shane Bieber. The velocity, which was never great, was was just did not play nearly as well this year. A 380 ERA in 21 starts, 128 innings, just 107 strikeouts. Was just very, very hittable. A lot of hard contact off of him and just did not have nearly the same stuff. The The walk rate was still very good. Um, the ground ball rate was very good. Um, but in terms of his off-speed stuff, that just got completely hit around. The average exit velocity and hard hit percentage, both in the bottom 3% of Major League Baseball. A lot of guys seeing him very, very well this year, which gives me pause and concern for trading for him for just one year. He's going to make probably around $12 million in arbitration next year. And I just don't know that that's necessarily... Um, 
worth it. Now, next guy on this list, number seven, I have Mitch Keller, the 28-year-old right-handed starter for the Pittsburgh Pirates. There was some talk about the Rangers being possibly linked to Mitch Keller last offseason, now with just two years of control left, an all-star season under his belt. I don't think the price will, I think the price will definitely be a little bit lower than last year, coming off a little bit um, worse year in terms of run prevention, especially in the second half, but a much better year in terms of durability. He made 32 starts this year, ended with a 421 ERA, 194 innings pitched, 210 strikeouts, a really solid first half, and a really quite terrible second half. A 331 ERA in, before the All-Star break, 117 innings pitched, um, 129 strikeouts. Um, in the second half, 13 starts for him, just 77 and a third innings pitched, and a 559 ERA. Um, yeah, he has been very healthy, been very mostly pretty consistent, at least in the first half. Um, you kind of know what you're getting from him. Um, and he has been healthy, which again is very nice. Um, but his chase rate and his, uh, non fastball stuff is just not that great. His off speed stuff his breaking stuff, not necessarily the most thrilling, um, arsenal out there, but consistent guy, healthy, um, might be worth kicking the tires on. Now the number six option in this list is a guy who I, I think is we're getting more to guys who are, are very much on the table of teams that I think are going to look to be sellers. I think Keller is, is definitely someone the pirates will listen on, but there's not a whole lot of options in their rotation. He has been the top of their rotation. He was a big part of why they were so incredibly good in the first month in a half ish of the season. And where we thought, Oh, maybe the pirates are going to be, um, in contention this year and him being very not good in the second half is, is not the only reason, but definitely a, a decent sized reason why the pirates fell off um, in a big way in the second half. Now the number six guy on this list is Michael Kopech, the right-handed starter for the Chicago White Sox, a team with a new GM for the first time in literally decades. Rick Hahn had been one of the longest tenured GMs in major league baseball. I believe he was, um, longer tenured than John Daniels. Um, the only one, the only, um, <laughs> the only GM who I can think of that is longer tenured than him is Brian Cashman uh, of the Yankees, who's been there since, uh, what, 95 or something like that. And Brian Cashman is probably never going away. And it looked like Rick Hahn was never going to go away because he helped the White Sox win the whole dang thing in 2005. Um, but they've got a new GM and there are a basically no untouchables um, on the White Sox. So I think Kopech is a guy who the Rangers could look at. Like I said, he's 28 years old. He's got two years of arbitration left. And uh, there's definitely some upside. Uh, there's a lot of highs and lows with this guy. Definitely some things to consider. Now, the positives about him. Um, well, he's been pretty durable. He's made 25 plus starts both of the last two years, made 25 starts in 2022, and he made 27 starts, 30 appearances overall this year in 2023, 129 and third innings this year, 119 innings last year. Um, these are basically been the only two years he's been a full-time starter, which is pretty solid. But you look at the numbers last year, they were much, much better. Um, a 354 ERA in those 119 innings, 105 strikeouts. The strikeouts weren't great last year. Strikeouts were better this year. Um, but this year, oh boy, it was a rough one for Michael Kopech and the Chicago White Sox. A 543 ERA in 129 innings, 90 walks, 29 home runs. That's not great. The FIP was an absolute nightmare, a 646 FIP, which is fielding independent pitching, which takes into account only the only three things that a pitcher can control, which is strikeouts, home runs, and walks. Basically, just how did you pitch if there was no defense? Just, um, just that. Um, and that wasn't great. The raw stuff for him is exceptional. The... Uh, the strikeout potential and just the potential in general of Michael Kopech, who is a Texas native. Uh, I believe he was born in Longview and uh, graduated from, uh, where was it? Uh, Mount Pleasant High School, which I believe is, is out in East Texas. Can't remember my uh, that on the uh, Texas high school football geography. That is part of my brain. Um, but he is a Texas native, was a former first round pick, uh, 33rd overall of the Red Sox um, back in 2014. 
And uh, yeah, a very high ceiling, but last year was very, very bad. Maybe being with the Rangers could help fix him because the White Sox are an absolute mess. And the Rangers have a pretty darn good pitching coach in Mike Maddox, um, a World Series champion, twice Mike Maddox, um, which is pretty fun for him and for the Texas Rangers, who are, by the way, just in case you forgot, they're reigning World Series champs. So the walk rate for him, run prevention, and the lack of length in starts is why you would be very hesitant to trade for Michael Kopech. He's got a couple of years of control, so maybe you roll the dice. I don't know how expensive it would be to get him. It could be a nice buy low candidate, um, especially since he's coming off such a horrible season. He's not the only White Sox starting pitcher on this list with very good stuff and a very, very bad 2023 season. Definitely a guy who I think the Rangers will keep on their radar. Coming up, we'll get into the top five guys who I think are actually very much on the block. Not that these last guys haven't been, but guys who I think the Rangers are definitely going to look very, very hard at trading for. Right after this word from our sponsors. Shout out to the Everydayers for making Locked On Raiders your first listen every single day. On Thursday's show, I'll be looking at the worst case scenario for the Rangers this offseason. Then on Friday, I'll be talking with Grant Schiller, looking at the minor league season in review. So you got that to look forward to for the rest of this week's show. Now, let's look at the number five pitcher on this list the Texas Rangers could trade for. I have Freddie Peralta, the 28-year-old right-handed pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. The Milwaukee Brewers lost their hometown hero, their manager, Craig Council, to their interdivision rival, the Chicago Cubs, for a boatload of money. And uh, yeah, it looks like that was all the Brewers needed to go fully in the tank, a team that never spends a whole lot of money um, and is coming off a division championship in the worst division in, well, at least in the National League, maybe in all Major League Baseball. Yeah probably a little bit better than the AL Central, but still a team that is always looking to sell off players, especially pitchers, because this is one of the maybe five, six teams in baseball that actually knows how to develop these homegrown starters. Must be nice. Wish the Rangers could do that, but it's fine because the Rangers can actually pay good players lots of money. Now, Peralta has three years left on his deal. He signed an extension, a five-year extension. I believe it was a couple of years ago. So he's got three years left. He's got um, five and a half million dollars that he's going to make in 2024. And then he's got two club options for the final two years of that deal in 2025 and 26. He'd make $8 million in both of those years. Now, Freddie Peralta is not a guy most people have heard of because he pitches for the Brewers and not a lot of people watch a whole lot of the Brewers, which is fine. They're a small market team, but this guy is a one-time all-star. He has got exceptional stuff. Uh, he's got great strikeout rates. His fastball is very, very good. And when he is on his game, he is absolutely exceptional. He has been in the big leagues since 2018, and um, he's been pretty darn durable for most of that time. 30 starts last year, 165 innings, uh, 17 starts the year before that, 78 innings, then 144 innings in 2021, where he was an all-star and started 27 games with a 281 ERA, the best season of his career by a fairly wide margin, 11.6 Ks per nine in his career. But the bad part of him is consistency and his command hasn't been super great three and a half walks per nine in his career. And when he's on, he's great, but he is not the most consistent guy from start to start. I am a sucker for pitchers who pretty much every time out there, you know exactly what they're going to give you. That's why I really liked Lance Lynn when he was here. You knew pretty much every time out, he was going to give you at least six innings, probably somewhere between one and three runs. And there weren't going to be a whole lot of really terrible games. There would be, every once in a while, a really excellent game, but consistency was great. That's why I love Jordan Montgomery as well. Very consistent kind of starting pitcher. Freddie Peralta is not that, but again, three years with two team options in there. I think he is going to be the most pricey of the uh, potential trade targets, uh, the starting rotation of the Milwaukee Brewers, but I think he could be worth it. Three years of control of a guy with this kind of upside who is um, 28 years old or going into his age 28 season. 
that is somebody that could cost a lot and could most definitely be worth it. One of those guys who I think Zeke Duran and Leo Tavares could, would definitely be on the table if the Rangers were considering trading for him. Now, next guy on this list, a guy who I think is very much a, a gettable player. I think the price tag on what Rick Hahn was asking for him at the trade deadline. That's right. We have another White Sox starting pitcher. This is Dylan Cease, the 28-year-old starting pitcher for the White Sox. He's got two years of club control, both arbitration seasons. He's going to make about $8.3 million next year. And the upside with Dylan Cease is his strikeout rate is very, very good. He finished second in Cy Young voting in 2022. Second. He should have finished um, a little bit higher, I believe, in 2021. And he has been incredibly durable for the last three seasons. At least 32 starts in each of the last three seasons. Um, 165 in two-thirds innings in 2021. 184 innings last year, or in, yeah, in 2022. And then 177 innings this year. But the walks have been a big, big problem with Dylan Cease in his career. He has been a very, very wild, um, effectively wild, wildly effective at times, but more just wild last year. A 450 ERA for him last season. Uh, just not great. Not a great year for him or for the White Sox in general. The consistency, again, not ideal. The 220 ERA in 2022, that was a real sign of like, wow, this guy could be incredibly special. And the 12.3 Ks per nine in 2021, where he did have an ERA that was under four, a 391 ERA, but for his career, a 383 ERA in 658 innings. The upside is again, very high, getting him away from the White Sox. It's got to be helpful. I mean, it's it's hard to have a more dysfunctional organization than the White Sox these last couple of years. Of talk about a homegrown core that the the future looks so incredibly bright for them just like three years ago, and now it's just all very much falling apart. But Cease is a guy who I really really like. Um, I would like for him to be more consistent, but the stuff is tantalizing. The durability is exceptional. So where even if he's having a um, a season like last year, or he's you know, you have a four and a half ERA, but he's given you 177 innings. That's really valuable. It's something that the Rangers could definitely use. Uh, now, the number three on this list, a guy who I, I don't have any idea if this guy is on the trading block. I'm assuming no, but if he is, the Rangers should definitely keep their eyes out for this guy. And I think anybody could. That is Max Fried, number three on my list, a 30 year old left handed pitcher. He is projected to make, uh, $21.6 million in his final year of arbitration control before he is a free agent. He has been with the Atlanta Braves since 2017. Well, since before then, but he's been in the big leagues with them since 2017. A former number seven overall pick from the San Diego Padres, which I can't remember what deal he was in to get him sent over to Atlanta, but it's definitely got to be a deal that the Padres are kicking themselves for at this point. Uh, yeah, he was in the Dustin traded with Dustin Peterson, uh, Jace Peterson, and Malik Smith for uh, Justin Upton and Aaron Northcraft. Yeah, that was not a great trade for the San Diego Padres back in 2014. But with the Braves, he has been absolutely exceptional, a big part of their World Series run. Um, a former silver slugger for all that matters of pitchers who don't hit anymore. He is a three-time gold glove winner. He is very good at run prevention, finished second in Cy Young voting last year, somehow only a one-time All-Star, but in seven years of his career, a 303 ERA, 710 innings pitched. He has been mostly pretty durable, but last year had a few injury concerns. He's got recurring hamstring issues. He had a forearm strain that caused him to miss, miss a pretty decent chunk of the year and also had a finger blister that really hampered him in the final weeks of the season put him on the il and was a little bit of a an issue for him i think in the postseason but still a very very good starting pitcher you may be thinking bryce the, the braves won it all literally two years ago and max freed has been their best pitcher for several years uh, maybe when healthy he was he was their best starting pitcher this year he was better than spencer strider but why, why would why would they trade him well let's look at the braves and what they're known for 
They're known for locking these guys up on very long-term deals. They've got Matt Olson, Austin Riley, Ronald Acuna Jr. They've, they've also got Sean Murphy inked up to a long-term deal. They've had Ozzie Albies under a long-term deal for a long time. Michael Harris. Um, they also have Spencer Strider locked up to a very, very long-term deal. And the one guy who they haven't been able to secure that long-term deal with is, of course, this guy right here, Max Fried. So... If the Braves want to go and spend big in the offseason, getting a starting pitcher like they have been linked to Aaron Noah, because they don't think that they can ink any kind of extension with Max Fried, and they want to maximize the value there. Alex Anthopoulos has been a very ruthless GM in terms of making aggressive trades that people don't always um, don't always understand at the time. But I think that they could get a big return for Max Fried if they put him on the market. I think Braves fans would be go absolutely nuts and be incredibly angry if they did that but if they think there's no chance at a long-term deal and they get a package they really like i think it could be an option not likely but i think it's possible now the number two guy on this list a guy who has definitely um definitely been linked to being traded that is tyler class now he's 30 years old projected to make 25 million dollars next year he's great at run prevention at his command he doesn't walk anybody he gets a lot of strikeouts but the health and consistency has definitely been an issue for him in the past is breaking stuff is absolutely fantastic the rangers saw how good he can be in the playoffs against them in that wild card game he is not the reason that the rays were swept he did everything he could in his power and he is definitely someone who i think the rangers will be keeping tabs on at least kicking the tires with the rays it's always very difficult trading with the rays and it's possible that glass uh, his arm could go up in smoke if the rangers trade for him but definitely someone worth keeping an eye on. And the number one trade target I have is a guy with one year of control with the Milwaukee Brewers. That is Corbin Burns. He's projected to make twenty or uh, $14 million next year. He is very good, very consistent, very healthy. Strikeouts, command, literally everything you could want in a starting pitcher. That's Corbin Burns. I would love him on the Texas Rangers. Um, he had a bad first half last year, but I mean, for his career, he has been incredibly consistent. He's a Cy Young winner. He is going to, after this year, probably have, almost definitely have 10 or four straight top 10 Cy Young finishes, um, a guy who could help any rotation in Major League Baseball. I would be over the moon if the Rangers could seal a trade for Corbin Burns. Like, that would be absolutely incredible. I think that the Brewers could definitely use one of uh, Leo Tavares or Ezekiel Duran. I think it would only take one of those guys. I think Duran would be more likely. Maybe you throw a Foscu in there as well. Um, be a, a pricey rental. It would be a, at least a full season rental. Um, and then the Rangers would probably think about signing Burns to a multi-year extension. He has been very publicly angry about how arbitration has gone for the last couple of years. I have no idea how he's only projected to make $14 million in arbitration this year. Coming off, um, you know, this, this year, it will probably be four straight top 10 Cy Young finishes and a Cy Young win and three straight all-star seasons. He's just been incredible. And I don't know why the Brewers didn't decide to lock him down for the long term and to argue over the minutia of his contract. He's a very good starting pitcher. And I think either of these, these top two guys, even the top three, um, are definitely guys who the Rangers will keep an eye on. I know it's just a one-year rental, but man, if you can add one of these Max Fried, Tyler Glasnow, or Corbett Burns to your rotation and they're healthy come October... Rangers will be looking very, sitting very pretty at a chance to go back to back on World Series championships in 2023 and 2024. That's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy World Series champion Texas Rangers baseball.